Hi folks, I'm Nath with Two Guys Are Riding. Welcome to our Car Tech How-To video on the 2023 Ford F-150 Tremor. Today, I'll be covering the driver's information and infotainment screens. I'll do a general overview, show you how to access information, and do a deep dive. Let's get started. Today, we're working with our friends at Chuck Spaeth Ford in New Ulm, Minnesota. So this is a 12-inch uh, digital display, and uh, over on the far left, you've got RPM gauge. That's not configurable. Then in the center, you've got driver information, and then your gauges. That is configurable. And then over on the far right, you have your speedometer, and that has a small bit of config configuration that you can do. Now, to control the parts that you can configure, you're going to use the buttons on the right side of the steering wheel. Specifically, you'll use this menu button, these two arrows, the OK and the back button. So let's get started. First of all, we'll just press the menu button here and we're going to go through the different things that you can configure. So first of all, Ford has something called My View. Now what that is, is a way for you to customize what screens you see all in one place. So for instance, if I click OK and I'm going to click OK again, anything that's not checkmarked, you can add. Anything that is checkmarked is already added. So I'm going to go down here and I am going to add tire pressure. So I just click OK. I am going to add pitch and roll, off-road status. Um, let's see, power distribution I want to see. I want to see eco behavior. Um, you, and then these are the other ones that you can see. Now, I'm going to go ahead and hit the back button. Okay, I'll hit the back button one more time. Okay, so now I'm back to my view. Now that I've configured it, I just press OK. And you'll notice on the right, uh, there's a, uh, so a dashed line with a white dot at the bottom. And it disappears. But that means these are all the screens you can scroll through with the arrow. So I'm going to go up here. I should get the top one. There's driver assistance, fuel economy, trip one, tire pressure, pitch and roll that I added, off-road status, power distribution, acceleration or eco behavior and then we're back to configure screens so that is how you kind of customize you know the views in the center now other than that you have got trip and fuel i'll just go down and press ok and uh, under that you've got driver assistance which gives you your uh, adaptive cruise control and your lane keeping assist so those are the two lines you see on the left and right and then as you're driving it'll that circle will stay there and then there'll be an additional circle in the front of you where it's looking for um, any, anything that you would need to uh, automatically emergency brake for. All right, I am going to hit the back button. Okay, so that's driver assistance. Now, if I click the arrow, here's your fuel economy. And then you've got some dashes on the right side. So you've got about three more, four more screens. And a lot of these screens you'll see in multiple places. Now, I'm going to hit the back button. I'm going to go down to truck info, click OK, and I'm going to go up here to engine information, click OK. All right, now I've got multiple screens I can, I can go through. So I've got seat belts, driver assistance. If I keep going, I go to the top, tire pressure, pitch and roll. I do like the way the gauge is separated at the top. That's really cool. And the speedometer RPM shrink up a little bit. Off-road status. Uh, and then we're back to power distribution here. Okay, so uh, if I go back, so basically all this stuff that you see right here, we saw um, just by clicking on this and then scrolling through. What Ford does is they give you an option to say, if you don't want to scroll through everything, you can go right to seat belts. But you can see on the right, all those dots, these were the screens we were uh, through before. So you can access them by clicking on any one of those. I'm going to hit the back button. All right, under towing. Okay, we could go straight to any one of these things. So if you just want to know towing status, you can click straight on there. But once you click on any of them, you can just use the arrow buttons to go through each of the screens. I'm not going to show you all of them, but they work the same way. There's towing. You can go down here to navigation, of course. It has a built-in navigation. You can program a home address, look at previous destinations, favorites, points of interest, POIs that are nearby, um, and that will all show up in the center. If you connected your phone, that would show up here. I don't have my phone connected, so I'm just going to keep going. 
audio. And to select your different sources, you just go through there and click on the one that you want. And it shows up down at the bottom of the screen. Now, I'm gonna go down one more to settings, click OK. And then here's where you can do some, some actual customization of the screen itself. So if I go into configure gauges, and I say swap gauge position, it's gonna switch the position of the two gauges in the middle at the top. Okay. Over here, you can select the left gauge, which is not the very left gauge, it's the second to left gauge. So, or the, the second from the end of the left. You can say, I want nothing showing, it takes that gauge out. You can say, I want oil pressure. I want, can't have transmission temperatures. It's not allowing us to select that one. You can have turbo boost if you want. And if I, that, and that's it, okay? Now, if I press the back button and I go down to say right gauge, now I can make the same changes to the uh, right gauge. Now you notice that now I have transmission temperature, but no turbo boost. So you got basically three choices, nothing oil pressure or transmission temperature. All right, click the back button here. And I don't think there's anything else in that screen. There is not, so I'm gonna go down. You can go down here and you can put a kilometers per hour in the speedo. You can see that change right there. You can also go down here and then change speed units if you want. Eco coach, click OK here. Visible in normal mode, so then you have a, a guide as to how you how well you're driving, your acceleration and your braking. All right, let me hit the back button. Go down here. You can turn on border crossing if you want. That's the reminders on or off. And if I go down again, you can select neutral tow. Okay. And then if I go down here, I have vehicle maintenance and I have oil life, so I'm gonna press okay. It shows us the oil life and you can press and hold to reset it. And then you can go down here, click okay, and it shows you the tire pressure. So I'm gonna go back again. I'm gonna go back one more time. I'm gonna go back again. All right, that was settings. So we're gonna go down one more. It shows, it does show a little arrow at the bottom of the screen, but we're just back to my view. So that is it for the driver's information screen. Next, we're going to move over to the infotainment screen. The infotainment screen is a 12 inch screen in this configuration, and it has a couple of physical buttons at the very top. So you do have a physical camera button, which is awesome. Brings on the 360 in the front camera. Okay, push it again, and you're back to the infotainment screen. You've got um, your parking sensors that you can turn off so that if you're backing up or something with a trailer or whatever, you don't want them on, you can have those off. Of course, you've got a hazard button, you've got traction control. All right, so this button over here is trail control. And if you push it, it'll enable it, and, and you can do a one pedal drive so it breaks when you take off the, uh, back off the accelerator. Um, and then you can set your speed uh, in the driver's information screen. Now, uh, this is Sync 4, so it does have you know a built-in 4G Wi-Fi hotspot. It has Sirius XM 360L. It has AM and FM, and of course Bluetooth and wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android Auto. Um, it, it does have um, in this particular configuration is a um, Bang and Olsen sound system, and in this particular vehicle has an eight-speaker system. Uh, now. The screen itself in Sync 4 uh, is divided into two areas. So you've got this main area and then you've got this little window. Um, there are a couple of screens where you can get rid of that window, but not everyone. So um, to change what shows up in here, you're gonna use these arrows. I'll just take you through them quick. And you get the idea. You wanna see them all? Press that button. Now you can go through them here and see all the screens, okay? So, I'm gonna hit that X right there. Now, occasionally they'll have a little arrow like this, and when they do, then you can click on that, and it becomes the whole, you know, this, this part of the screen, and then this goes to something different. All right, so I'm gonna hit close. So over here, um, you've got some basic dedicated buttons on the bottom. You got audio, phone, navigation, favorites, apps, settings, and features. All right, so, Let's just go through these. So on audio, if you go up here, you can click here to get all your sources, okay? Hit the back button right there. Um, <clears throat> to save a station, you're just gonna find any station, doesn't matter if it's a blank station or not, it's just a station you don't 
maybe you don't want anymore, click and hold, and there it is. It saves it. All right. You do have, because this is Sirius XM, you do have a live button, a pause button, and a back button. You can tune by using this button here, and then you can just scroll through them if you want. Click on the one that you want, and it pulls up. All right. You can also browse, and then you can look at different categories. All right. So that's the basics of Sirius XM. Now, if we go up here to sources and we go to FM, it's going to look very, very similar without the play and pause button. Okay, you can tune this way. You can scan basically to the next station. You can go by increments right here. Um, and then you can click on sound. And then from there, you can set your, uh, your treble, your mid-range, and your bass. And this is just a click and drag. Down here, you've got balance and fade. Same thing, click and drag. And then you have speed compensated volume, which just tries to adjust the volume in the car according to the ambient noise in the vehicle. So it always sounds the same level in your ears. And you can adjust the sensitivity of that right there. And then you can change the sound mode from stereo to surround just by clicking. All right, we hit the back button here. I'm gonna show you very quickly uh, FM radio here. So I go to sources, or AM radio, excuse me. And there is, I do like the fact that Ford still includes AM radio. A lot of cars are going away from having that. And then just like in the FM screen, you do have a direct button where you can go ahead and just punch in a number and hit enter. All right, that's audio. Let's go over to phone for a minute. And what I'm gonna do is add my phone at this point. So you're gonna to wanna to turn your phone on. You're gonna to wanna to go to your Bluetooth settings. Make sure Bluetooth is turned on. And then if you're like me, you're, you've been connected to numerous devices. So scroll to the bottom of the list because that's where the, the truck's gonna appear. Click add phone. Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. All right, then it showed up at the bottom of my Bluetooth list as Ford F-150, so I click on it. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. And it did, so I did that on my phone. It wants to know if I want to allow contacts and favorites from my phone to sync. I click don't allow because it's not my car. If this is your car, you would want to click allow. So your, your all safety, your addresses are in please there. Please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Okay, this is 911 assist, um, and if you turn that on, basically if it senses an accident, it's gonna call 911 for you. All right, so I'm gonna hit finish. Now, it comes up with this message, and it says, your phone supports Apple CarPlay, and if it was your Android, it would come up with a message about Android. On your phone, you, you have a message saying, do you wanna use CarPlay? If you click not now, it's only gonna click via Bluetooth. Um, so I'm gonna click use CarPlay, and I'm gonna click, yes, I would like to enable CarPlay. And there I go. So now I'm going to shut my phone off and put it away. So basically Apple CarPlay will take, or Android Auto will take any app from your phone that will work with the vehicle system and puts it up in the infotainment screen so you don't have to touch your phone. Okay, so you can see I have various numbers of uh, various diff different apps. I've got Apple Maps, Google Maps, and I've got Waze. Um, I've got, um, let's see, TuneIn Radio. I've got another radio app. I've got podcasts, got Apple Music. I've got somewhere on here, I've got Amazon Music as well. Um, somewhere. Okay, you do have a split screen uh, in both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. Uh, Android Auto just introduced that. Uh, the split screen view, but basically you get your navigation, you have a dedicated home button that you can click on to, you know, navigate home, and then you have your media. Now, uh, this button or this button, if you click on it, it'll go full screen. One of the cool things is it's got such a big screen and this is a little annoying to have that there. If you click this little arrow up here, you now have full screen Apple CarPlay and that is just way better. So I'm really glad to see that button there. These buttons on the left uh, are pretty much your most recently used things. So when you go to your phone button, it, you notice that's now changed to Apple CarPlay. 
because your whole phone, texting, um, voicemail, your phone calls, all go through Apple CarPlay. And it's gonna look like this. Okay, so you can go up here and you can type in if you, you know, something if you need to. All right, the thing is that's really cool is if you set your, your phone to wake up to the assistant, um, you can use Siri or you can press and hold the voice command button on the steering wheel and it will access Siri for you. For instance, Siri, find me the closest McDonald's. The only option I found is McDonald's on South Broadway Street in New Ulm, about three miles to your east, and it gets 100% positive ratings. Do you want that? Then you said go. Okay, want that full screen? There you go. Now you may be wondering, can I run, you know, like FM radio, AM radio, uh, Sirius XM, and still be using the navigation? Yes. You just have to go back to audio, get that source, whatever you want. Uh, and I can't turn up the volume because of copyright things, but it, it's playing. And then you just go back to CarPlay. And now that audio is playing. What you can't do is use another audio app in uh, an Apple CarPlay. But this is fantastic, having this ability to expand that screen. So, in a short, that is Apple CarPlay. Wonderful, wonderful addition to infotainment screens and cars. All right. Let's talk about the built-in vehicle navigation. So the easiest way to do a plotter route is just to say, hey, Ford, and then tell what you want. But you sometimes need to turn that feature on. So what you want to do is you want to go into settings. You want to, um, if it's on this first screen, you need to swipe over and you're looking for Ford Assistant. Click on it. Say, listen for a wake word, turn that on, and then go here to preferred wake word. And these are the ones that you can suggest. So I'm gonna leave it as, okay, that. And let's go back. I'm just gonna leave it here. I can, I can do it from any screen. So, okay, Ford. Take me to the closest McDonald's. Which item would you like? Two. Starting route to McDonald's. Obey traffic laws. Be alert and use voice commands while driving. Please proceed to the highlighted road. Now you'll notice right there that it was really loud and I adjusted it. And that's how you adjust that volume. So if the prompt comes on too loud or too soft, while it's talking, quickly grab the volume knob and adjust. Okay? All right. And so you can see that I can just say that and there we go. And this is using the vehicle's built-in navigation. All right, now, um, people also ask, well, can you make this full screen? Yes, you have a little uh, X right here, and if I go there, the navigation does become full screen. There are some one-time settings you can customize your map to look like. So if I press this button up here, and then I can go down to, um, I can go to map orientation, and I can change it, the, the, the look of the map, or I could go down to here and go to avoid things on a route. Like if I don't want to use toll roads, I can check mark that. And then when I search, it will never take me on a toll road. So these are the things that you can, you just click to select it. Down here, you've got show on map. So I can have, do I want gas stations to show up all the time? Yep. Uh, maybe I want food to show up. Um, let's see, let's go, go down the list. Maybe I want coffee. And then on my screen, no matter where I'm at, where I'm driving, if one of those things is near me, it'll pop up on the map and just show it to me. And if I want to go there, I just click on it. You can go to more settings here, and you can go into routing and map preferences, and then you can set these. Okay. Um, now, breadcrumbs is kind of a cool thing if you're off-road. You, you can turn on auto, you can turn it on on, or you can turn that off. Okay, all right, let's go back here a minute. Let's go back. And then you can also look at some things on, you optimize uh, a route for trailer pulling. So some really cool things, and it's all in here, and it's just a simple click and go in there and read it, and you can make the settings. So a very, very nice uh, navigation system. Now, if you want to exit and cancel the route, Ford leaves a nice little X right here, you just click on it, and it's canceled. It was a mistake you canceled it you can always hit resume all right let's talk about this favorite button right here 
So this favorite button can be set to any one of these things that you see on the screen. If you want a one button push to get any of these things, then you can do that. So like for instance, maybe I want a real quick thing for um, zone lighting. And now that favorite is zone lighting. So if I go back to navigation, that's zone lighting. Just click on it and go there. Now, if I want to edit it again, I can click it again and it brings up the list. I can change it. Okay, so that is a really cool button. All right, um, apps right here shows you uh, that Apple CarPlay and Android Auto apps are already on here. You can find more mobile apps there that'll work with the vehicle, or you can look for help with mobile apps right there. Under settings, okay, we're gonna go through a few of these, but they all work the same way. So under display, um, you can turn it off if you want. Everything's still functioning, it's just the display is dark. Tap the display to bring it back. You want not off, but just kind of a calm screen, there you go. Now, uh, you can adjust the brightness physically if you want by just dragging that. You can also hit reset. But if you go into mode, then you can set it to auto day or night. So night's gonna look a little darker, Day is going to be a little brighter. Takes just a minute to change here. Okay, there's day, and then you can set it to auto, so it'll automatically switch. Most everyone just leaves it on auto. All right, let's go back twice. And uh, this is where you go through to set up your uh, 4G Wi-Fi hotspot. That is through AT&T, so that is a monthly bill. You can go here for software software updates. It does have automatic updates. Now, um, Ford's kind of split these up, so some of the updates will actually update while you're driving, but other ones that would maybe affect your, you know, the, the instrumentation on the vehicle, whatever, that it stores and waits to your, to a spot where you're connected to maybe your home Wi-Fi, and then it, and then you can uh, download and install it then, okay? And you can check on those things right here. We've already looked at Ford Assistant. We've already talked about 911 Assist. Um, you can take a look at all the phones that are connected if you want. And right now, like mine's connected to Apple CarPlay, but I could say I only want my phone for uh, media. So you can you can change those things just by clicking. And, and where that's nice is if you have a second passenger and maybe they're the ones that are taking the phone calls or whatever, they wanna play the media, then they can control it from their phone. All right. Uh, under vehicle, you can turn on a 30 minute max idle or you can turn that off just by clicking on it. Same thing for the rear occupant alert. If you wanna know if someone's sitting in the back seat, it will alert you when you turn the car off. Easy entry exit. This is a really nice feature. If you turn it on, it's blue. Um, basically when you shut the car and open the door, it'll slide your seat all the way back. And in this particular vehicle, because it has uh, power tilt and tri uh, power tilt and telescope, um, it will raise the steering wheel and push it all the way in. It just makes it easy for you to get out. And then when you get in and start it, it'll put everything back where it was. All right, my key is a program that Ford has made so that you can take, uh, let's say you have two keys. You can program one of them under my key. The other one remains um, sort of like the master key. But basically you can create restrictions for younger drivers. All right, so that's all right in there. All right. Remote start setup, that's a nice feature. So climate control, you can set to auto, you can set to last settings. I like leaving mine on auto because um, it'll sense if the, if the outside is, is cold, then it will not only turn on your car, it'll turn on the heat, it'll turn on the heated steering wheel, it'll turn on the heated seats, it's all very nice. And then you can set for how, how long you want that remote control start to last, and then it will shut off the vehicle afterwards. All right, you can set the clock from here, but you can also just go up here and click on the clock from any screen, and it brings you to the same thing. Hey, right, here's where you can set up driver profiles. I won't get into that because it's not my vehicle, but this is where you start. Just click yes and follow the prompts on the screen. And what that does is, according to your key fob, it's going to allow when you step in, all of your favorites from, you know, for the media are set to you, your seat, your steering wheel. When your significant other gets in the vehicle, all the favorites, seat, steering wheel are set to their key. So it just automatically changes for you. Now, under general, 
Here's where you can change the language just by clicking on it. Temperature units. And all of these work the same way. Um, sometimes on tire pressure, we get a few more options. And here you have three. So um, th uh, this is where you turn off that button beep if you don't like that button beep. Okay, so that's all under settings. Now, if I go to features, you can go straight to driver assistance. Um, auto hold. So when you come to a stop at a stop sign or a stoplight, once you're stopped, you can take your foot off the brake if this is turned on and the vehicle will remain braked until you touch the accelerator. Here's where you can change how cruise control works. So right now it's set to adaptive cruise control, but if you don't like adaptive for some reason, you can just turn it to normal cruise control and then it will work like the cars from the 1980s. Okay, I'm going to leave that right there. Lane centering is turned on, and that's a little bit different than lane keeping assist, which is on the steering wheel. Um, and I showed you that a little bit earlier. But what lane centering does is um, it, it does a much better job of keeping you centered between the lines. Lane keeping assist will allow you to, to wander close to the line, and then the steering wheel will help you get back to the middle. Lane centering works much harder to actually just keep you in the middle. So you can turn speed sign recognition on or off, okay? What's really cool about this is that Ford has now put that sign, instead of being just in the middle of the dashboard, it's actually on the speedometer. So it shows you, as your needle's going up, it shows you where 35 miles an hour is. So that is a really neat improvement on the dashboard. If you have speed sign recognition, you can click on tolerance, and you can say, well, you know what? I want to be allowed to go five miles an hour over the speed limit before it starts to, you know, bark at me about speeding. So you can set that or you can go under anywhere that you like. All right, let's go back. Um, let's see here. Let's talk a little bit about the safety systems. And there's two different varieties. Um, one is a simple on. Whoops. One is a simple on or off. Okay, and the other one, you have choices. So anything that has an arrow has a choice. So let's go into one of these. This is pre-collision assist. So under here, I can turn on or off the whole thing. I want a distance indication to show up on my dashboard. I want automatic emergency braking to happen. You can turn that on or off. Evasive steering assist, if you all of a sudden have to turn in a real big hurry, it makes the steering easier. So you can, you can actually make the turn hopefully and then you can adjust the alert sensitivity to high normal or low and that you just have to play with it's a personal preference but those are the two types of settings you can make under here there's just a huge list of safety features let's go back here um, pro power on board this is where you turn it on or off you can have generator mode okay so your engine continues to, to supply power if it needs to. Um, and then this is, is showing you how much watts there are. Hey, zone lighting is cool on these vehicles. They have lights all over. First of all, i got to turn it on. If I want just the front lights because I just need a little more visibility tonight, I can do that. If I want just the side lights, I can turn those on. Those are on the mirror. I can turn on some back lights. I can turn on some side lights on the driver's side, or I can hit all zones, okay? And that is just a really, really neat feature. All right, turn that off there. All right, this is the trail turn assist. And basically what that does, if you turn that on, if you're off-road, it allows you to turn sharper because it breaks one of, the, some, one of the rear wheels as you're turning, depending on which direction you're turning, and allows you to make a tighter circle if you need to. So that is it for the infotainment screen and the driver's information screen on the 2023 Ford F-150 Tremor. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching.